Follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke TV. Visit our website at www.ubeleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Ubeleke TV, rising star out of fairground. Hello and welcome to World Watch on Ubeleke TV. I am Antonia Wokolo. Foreign Secretary David Cameron has met former President Donald Trump in Florida before heading on to Washington, D.C. for talks. The former Prime Minister is in the U.S. for talks with senior government officials about the wars in Gaza and Ukraine. Cameron has previously criticized Trump, who will likely stand for the Republican Party in the U.S. election. During Cameron's visit to the U.S., he's expected to speak to U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken about support for Ukraine and bringing stability to the Middle East, the U.K.'s Foreign Commonwealth and the Development Office said. Republican lawmakers have been blocking a proposed $60 billion military aid package for Ukraine for months. Trump and his supporters within the party opposed the U.S. package providing aid to Ukraine. Those in the House of Representatives have vowed to vote against the package without additional funding for U.S. border security being agreed to first. Bulgaria's parliament today formally approved an interim government to run the EU member country until snap parliamentary and regular European Parliament's elections on June 9. Dimitar Glavchev, 60 years old, was sworn in as interim prime minister in a ceremony at the National Assembly where his ministers were also taking the oath of office. He was picked by Bulgarian President Roman Radev under recent constitutional amendments that limited his choice to just a few senior state office holders. Glavchev, the head of the National Audit Office and a former legislator from the centre-right GEP party and Speaker of Parliament, said the ministers he selected for his interim cabinet are equally distant from all political parties. The move comes after the two largest political groups Gerb and reformists, led by what by we continue the change, failed to find common ground to continue their uneasy coalition after nine months in office. The coalition's collapse in March helped pave the way toward a snap parliamentary election, the sixth since April 2021, which is expected to deepen the political crisis and put on hold key reforms. Disagreements between the two former coalition partners continued over some of the ministers in the interim government. The reform complain that their opponents dominate the new cabinet and may use their positions to clinch an unfair election victory. Police and Red Cross workers are engaged in a rescue operation at a swollen river in northern Kenya after a bus carrying an unknown number of passengers was swept away by floodwaters. Police say some of the passengers managed to escape just before the bus was submerged while others climbed onto the roof. It is not clear how many are still trapped inside the bus. The incident happened just hours after Kenya's roads agency announced the closure of another section of the same road that was flooded after the Tana River world due to continuing heavy rains. Kenya Red Cross said it had dispatched two rescue boats to ensure swift and effective response. The government had on Monday issued a flood alert to residents of Tana River and Lamu counties after a dam upstream was breached by flooding. And that's all we have for you on World Watch. I am Antonia Wokolo. Follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke TV. Visit our website at www.ueleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Ueleke TV, rising star at the fairground.